Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, weekend update show. Hope everybody is having uh, a great start of their weekend. Hopefully you guys will have a tremendous amount of rest. Uh, stock market is uh, absolutely nuts. Let's go back three weeks ago, right? Three weeks ago, David Tepper, uh, founder of Appaloosa Capital Management. This is, I'm talking about one of the, the most aggressive bulls in the history of Wall Street. The only other bull I can remember going, you know, for all you guys who've been trading for a long, long time, was this guy named uh, Joe Patapaglia and Abby Joseph Cohn. Used to be a chief financial uh, officer of Goldman Sachs. They're like the, the biggest bulls in the world. Um, David Tepper, um, three weeks ago, came out this, and he said, this is, this is the, the, the biggest bubble, right? The biggest uh, misappropriated price action for the stock market since the dot-com era. This is three weeks ago, okay? Uh, Warren Buffett, arguably one of the most brilliant value investors. I think, again, I think, I think the word investor now these days versus investor from 50, 60 years ago is a little bit different. Again, it's a different game. Uh, trading, investing, everything in between has completely changed. Uh, this isn't, you know, this isn't 30 years ago that the same principles apply. It's just not. A lot of people may think that trading, investing uh, is the same from 30 years ago, but it's really, really not. There's so many different dynamics have changed. The technology has changed. Sentiment has changed. Rationale, obviously what we're seeing has completely changed. So the, 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 the people who wrote books on trading psychology 20, 30 years ago, they're almost obsolete. Yeah, there's some principles that of course remain the same, the patience, the, you know, the, the methodical uh, planning and all that good stuff, absolutely. But because of, uh, because of technology, uh, because of so many different macro events and how that technology plays out, the game has changed. I mean, I was a completely different trader uh, 10 years ago than I was 20 years ago, okay? And completely different than I am now. So everything involves, and I think uh, the people who had the really, really strong opinions and voices, they, they, they had great feeling of the tape uh, of the environment years ago, but it changes. Warren Buffett, again, uh, sold the airline stocks literally at the dead bottom, uh, I thought it was like three weeks ago, uh, and again, what, arguably the most value, most important value investor of all time, okay, sells at the bottom. Again, was he wrong? Well, look at the, look at the math. So you're looking at a market that three weeks ago, the biggest bull, one of the biggest bulls on Wall Street was completely negative, obviously wrong. Warren Buffett sells airlines at the bottom, obviously wrong. You had 40 million unemployment, the most irrational stock market. This is three weeks ago. Everybody was wrong. I have friends of mine for the last two, three weeks, and these are the guys, you know, these guys have been trading with for years, you know, 15, 20, 25, 30. These guys, are, most of these guys are clueless right now, okay? They started shorting the market, they got killed. They got long the market just to make back their losses, and they cut themselves off right when they got back their money to see the market go, go e even more. So, again, this type of tape, if you're looking from the macro point of view and you're trying to put uh, an overall macro opinion on it, it's a very, very tough game to play. It really is. I, I, I think the day-to-day -day aspect is just marvelous. And, and, and I don't say that in a good way. I say that in the, most, uh, in, in the most surprising and shocking way. Like literally anything can happen. Like literally anything can happen. If you told me uh, a month ago, we would have the biggest bulls selling the market, right? Selling the market, 40 million unemployment. Uh, unfortunately, the, the horrific murder, and that's all you can call it, uh, of Floyd, uh, protests, some peaceful, some rioting, COVID. Does anybody even still remember that COVID is a real thing, that we're still kind of locked down? I know some states have opened up, but yesterday, uh, Governor Murphy from, uh, from the state of New Jersey, where I'm from, extended house arrest, basically, for an extra 30 days. So again, COVID, if anybody still remembers, is still real. The economy is still messed up. And if you look at the final numbers yes, uh, yesterday, and I looked at it this morning, I woke up 6.30 in the morning. I, I work nonstop. Like literally, uh, I look at so many charts, especially on the weekend, not necessarily for ideas for the week, but just kind of getting a sense of what's what. 
And I looked at so many charts and I looked at the final scoreboard and it was staggering. The Dow is up almost 7% for the week, right? The NASDAQ, the Qs that, that lagged, right? That literally lagged. They were up 3.5% for the week. If you look at the price action of a lot of beta names, they didn't participate. We'll get to that uh, in a second. If they did participate, it wasn't tradable. Okay, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, but I think the biggest shock came from Friday. If the bulls needed any more ammunition, if they needed any more fuel to the fire, you got a, a May non-farm jobs report of an expansion of an uptick of 2.5 million jobs completely came out of left field considering what is happening in the world right now. The market absolutely exploded. The Dow at one point was up over a thousand, closed up 800 or so. Just an absolute amazing, amazing week uh, for the bulls. And if you look at the biggest catalyst for the S&P and the Dow, look no further than Boeing. And by the way, somebody on, uh, uh, I think it was on StockTwits said, hey, Dan, don't forget, watch Boeing this week. Okay, because 150 points and 41% move from last week is not enough. Oh, I am watching Boeing, just not the way uh, they're watching Boeing. So again, guys, watch Boeing this week. Uh, anyway, so, I mean, look, when you get a 41% move in Boeing, in one week, uh, obviously that's gonna put a really, really big imprint into the Dow, into the S&P, but regardless of the fact, just an unbelievable job uh, by the bulls. And again, if you look at the scoreboard where we are right now, again, Qs are at all time highs, right? We took out uh, that 236 level, right? 236 level uh, that was on February, right? February the 20th, uh, we went as high as 240 so the queues are breaking out if you look at the russell uh russell again big big gap up into supply again kind of kind of got rejected into supply and rolled over that's a little bit of a bearish uh view going into next week again when i say bearish i don't want to use the word bearish i want to say at least sell side for a possible back test just to kind of uh get its feet you know it's a little bit overextended here uh if you look at the spy again the spies were up nearly five percent for the week I mean, just again same kind of chart uh, same view as the IWM. You kind of got this move uh, into supply, into the linear regression line. A little bit of a, you know, a little bit of an inverted hammer. So again, uh, I wouldn't be shocked. Again, no, nothing would shock me, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if we do get a back test uh, Monday and Tuesday uh, into the rising five-day support. It doesn't mean stocks won't go up because again, again, this if you if you did any type of chart work this weekend or are planning to, you'll find. 400 stocks that you could put on your on your on your trading watch list. Flip far 500, right? Um, there's so many, so it's very very important right now that you take the stocks that you really like to trade and are very very comfortable and just focus on this. Again, you can't be in 3,000 stocks at the same time. Again, at least I can't. Okay, so uh, I think the market is incredibly bullish. Can we get a little bit of a back test in the indexes uh, for the least you know? first part of the week, Monday, Tuesday? Absolutely. I, I don't think there's going to be anything substantial. We're not talking about uh, any Armageddon, you know, the market equity prices destruction, which is, again, when you have a big, uh, especially almost 8% move in the Dow and 5% move in the S&P, uh, it's logical just to get a little bit of a back test, especially when you look at the technical analysis uh, part of this whole equation uh, into the linear regression line in inverted hammer, both on the spies and uh, on the IWM. Uh, so, Crazy Friday. Uh, Friday was probably, considering where the market was and what the market did, the mark, the, Friday for me was probably the most inactive day I can remember probably in the last 10 years. Right? That's, it, and, that's just, and that's just a fact. And it, it's, it's kind of an eye-popping statement considering what the market did. Now, when you look back at what my game plan was on Thursday night, if you go back to Thursday night's video, you'll kind of understand why. So Thursday night, uh, we talked about how there was a lot of red flags in beta, okay? Despite the market rallying, and again, you can, you can make a very, very clear case that Boeing was the market, right? On Thursday, on Wednesday, ever since it broke out off that 156 channel. But for me, I looked at beta on Thursday night and I had a game plan, sell beta, okay? Sell beta on Friday. I, there was a lot of red signals for me. And I said, you know what? These things are just not rallying. They're very, very weak. They can't rally with the strength of the market. There's a lot of undertones in the strength of the market considering Caterpillar and Boeing were really 
the really big dominant forces behind the move, quote unquote, of the indexes. So I had a very, very specific plan and uh, I loved Netflix short. Uh, I loved Shop short. I liked Amazon short. I liked Roku short. And a lot of these names were playing, playing out the same way. Zoom I liked on the short side. So we gapped up on Friday ahead of uh, those numbers, right? Um, I said, well, this is perfect. You know, this is absolute perfect. And if the market, you know, these, if these stocks go into supply, okay, if they go into supply and they go green to red and start taking out Friday's ranges, they're going to be shorts. And if you, if you look at what happened to beta pre-market, they got murdered. Okay. Absolutely murdered. Um, I liked, for example, uh, Netflix below 11 pre-market, the damn thing went to 404. Okay. I liked shop, for example, uh, 425, excuse me, uh, 725. It went pre-market to 702. Amazon, the same thing. And so like stocks just got murdered. Like everything was down 10, $20. And I'm like, wow, this is completely well, I'm completely screwed here because again, 90% of my game plan for Friday is gone now. It's completely gone. Now, again, before you turn around and say, well, again, you can buy them, right? If the market is surging, you could buy them. Of course you can, but keep this in mind. When a stock runs back up on a dead cat bounce, you don't have an edge because you don't know technically where the bounce is supposed to come because they're, again, they're trading in between channels. Unless the stock gets into a channel, test the channel, and then turns around, at least you have a course of an exit strategy. When you have most names bouncing off levels, random levels, okay, you don't know where the bounce is gonna stop, start, or you don't know where the bounce is gonna stop. So 90% of my game plan was done, right? Completely done. I, was, I, I really loved the beta uh, to the downside, and they all went without me eight o'clock in the morning, eight fifty. literally everything was down 15, $20. So I was sitting there and I'm like, wow, this absolutely completely sucks. So I had a choice. Okay. And this is where, um, I think experience is incredibly important. Okay. Uh, for traders, I think a lot of people, and when you're new, you're, you're, you're kind of going to understand what, I, what I'm saying. When you see the scoreboard light up, especially after, uh, the jobs number and you see the Dow, up 600, up 700, up 800. Something that every trader tries to fight every single day, every single week, every single month is the idea of FOMO, right? The fear of missing out versus reality. And unfortunately, when your game plan gets absolutely blown up, especially pre-market, there's nothing you can do about it, okay? You have a choice. You can start trading random stocks that 99.9% .9 you probably do not want because again, you, you don't have a track record with these names. You don't know their tendencies. You don't know their true measured potential. Again, I know Amazon's true measured potential. I know Tesla's true measured potential. I don't know the measured potential, for example, on like US Steel, right? Or Canada Goose. We'll talk about Goose in a second. There's actually a nice pivot on Goose. Uh, uh, but I, again, that's the choice. And unfortunately, a lot of new traders, if you're coming in flat, now again, if you have positions overnight and Friday, congratulations, for example, Mike, uh, Mike Crossland had, his, I think, his first or second biggest day ever. He had some pretty good overnights uh, and did pretty well with them. But, but again, if you're not, if you are not coming in with overnight exposure and you're not getting gaps, you have that choice. Either sit it out as a, prof as a professional adult, right? Uh, a responsible professional adult or trying to play catch up with B, C, D, G, F, and Z type of stocks. Again, more chances than not, they're going to trade within a 20, 30 cent range the whole day compared to like a Tesla or Amazon or Nvidia that could explode and give you a macro uh, expansion channel. So I had that choice, okay? Uh, and I was sitting there watching the market and I was sitting there, I'm like, nothing is rallying. Like literally none of my stocks are rallying. Again, I trade, Primarily the same names every day, Tesla, NVIDIA, Netflix, right? Uh, Roku, Beyond, Facebook, App. Like they're not rallying. They're just not doing anything. Like what, like again, what am I supposed to do? And at the end of the day, uh, I, had, I, I had two scalps. And ironically, the two scalps that I had, uh, I made some money on Tesla on a, you know, not, not a great pull, but a, a pull uh, before it kind of turned around. And then I scalped uh, some Boeing. We'll talk about the pivots in a second to the downside. But uh, a, again, I, I think the most important part of my day on Friday, and, and I think 
again, what we talk about all the time, some days you really have to say, look, forget about the scoreboard. We've been, we've been talking about the irrelevant part of the scoreboard for years. Um, you have to make that understanding and really connect the dots that certain days, the market is just not going to give you the freedom to do whatever you want, okay? Most days, beta, 99% of the time, beta is expanding up, down, they're gonna do something, right? Um, and you have to come to a, a responsible conclusion that, you know what, mentally, it's much easier for me to kind of wait, pick for my spots. If they come, they come. If they don't, they don't, and kind of go to the next day. As far as I'm concerned, again, I could be wrong, there's no such thing as one day in the market that is gonna make your career. But if you trade improperly and you trade outside of your comfort zone and you deviate from what you do day in, day out, you know, all the time and prostitute your money, you're going to, number one, really start to make really bad habits. And those bad habits are going to be exaggerated uh, over and over again. And you're going to find yourself in a very, very ugly situation that you're going to chop yourself up on days that you really should not be trading because your process is not being spot, uh, hot spotlighted. And unfortunately, my process, uh, or at least my stocks, were not being um, highlighted. Okay, they just weren't. They just, you know, they, they weren't weak enough to confirm downward channels that they created uh, pre-market, and they definitely weren't strong enough uh, to make upward bias channels. For the exception of Apple and NVIDIA that I apologize for the people uh, in its private Twitter feed, I just completely forgot to put them into those channels. Uh, folks in the live webinar, they traded NVIDIA, they traded Apple to the upside. There was nothing else out there, okay? Amazon also, Amazon I put into the, into the feed. There was nothing else out there that was even, even, even trying to uh, move the needle, okay? And, and again, that is where the patience comes in that's where your, um, your responsibility to your trading account uh, is very, very important. And as far as I understand, Monday is a new day, right? So Monday, you know, like I said, I said personally, I, I thought the value for me on Friday, for me personally, on value was like 1%, okay? And, and, and you know what? I'm okay with that. And, th and that's the most important part. Um, I feel very, very strong that uh, some of the attributes that I try to instill, especially in the traders in the live webinar, is the ability to quickly accept the fact that it's okay not to trade. It's okay to sit on your hands only, okay, only when your process is not being completely in full bloom. And that's what builds maturity. That's what slowly but surely uh, takes away the FOMO. And once you start realizing, hey, you know what, I'd like to trade, but I don't need to trade, this is where you start building really good habits and eventually when you get a value day, okay, and most days are value days, that that's the day that you are going to trade with a lot of uh, conviction, with a lot of confidence, and you're gonna really step on the gas with extreme prejudice, and that's the name of the game. Learning how to step back, learning how to get aggressive, and understanding when you are, uh, when you do have the advantage. So if you look at uh, Friday's pivots, again, not a lot, right? Not a lot. Um, so here is, you know, here is my pre-market. Uh, here is my pre-market. Um, and this is, again, this is before everything washed out. I said 90% of beta names are either red or barely green despite the gap up. So I said, okay, my, my, my thought process from the night before is on point. Uh, you know, it's, it's perfect. I think if we, if we get a sell-off, you know, we're going to hit these things. Um, giving, uh, and I said, I'm going to give the bears every opportunity to play out on the first candle. So obviously wishing everybody a good day. And unfortunately, like I said before, I, I we didn't get the opportunity. Everything got killed, uh, prior to the jobs number. We saw literally everything, uh, you know, Amazon was down 20 shop was down 25, uh, Netflix was down 11. I mean, everything just got killed. So, uh, my game plan was nuts. And basically I said, 90% of my game plan is gone. Just like that, beta murdered pre-market, going back to bed. I was obviously joking. Uh, but again, there were some names, uh, there were some names that I did like, um, you know, that, that they did okay. They did okay. Again, it wasn't anything uh, crazy. Uh, Roku, 10130, 101, if it builds below, can flush. Again, here is the first pivot on Roku. Again, not enough juice, all right? So here is the 10130. We talked about it the night before off that 10150 area. Uh, again, one to 100. That's it, one to 100. Uh, you know, a dollar move in Roku, again, Nothing really there to talk about. Uh, again, not necessarily enough strength, not necessarily enough weakness. 
Uh, AAXN uh, 9550 needs to build. Again, AAXN had a really, really big run um, this week. This is the old Taser. Obviously, stun guns. Uh, stun guns. Um, what is it? All these body armors and stuff. Obviously, the play uh, on, on the fortunate riots. And I say 95, 50, 96. Uh, you know, it went to 97. Okay, went to 97 before reversal. Uh, too low, 188 if it builds below can flush. And again, I was just trying to stay with the theme that I wanted to see the names play out uh, prior to, you know, prior to everything, you know, everything flushing really, really hard. Um, and again, you could see it. Here was the 188 and it just got killed before, you know, before it went to 182 pre-market. Again, there's nothing you could have done with this trade unless you chase the down pre-market. Again, I got completely... Uh, I got completely, um, you know, I got completely uh, negated on that trade. Uh, Tesla, we actually had a sneakier pivot on Tesla. I, I still like Tesla here uh, going into this week. Again, it needs to really confirm macro numbers. Uh, Facebook, I was talking about the downside, never got there. Uh, Goose did all right. Canada Goose uh, did all right. Uh, 2585, 26 uh, needs to build. Congratulations for you guys who did catch uh, Canada Goose. So here's a 2565, 26. And Canada Goose actually went to 2750s. Uh, again, great product. Really, really great product. Uh, Amazon, again, I was looking to the downside, 2435. Obviously never got there. And then we had a pivot back to the upside on that. So nice move on Goose. And then I was looking to the upside. And this is kind of my point of the stocks that I was trading. They weren't, I didn't want to short them because it was way too, you know, down way too much. And then I said, well, let's start looking to the upside. All right, so I started looking to the upside and I go, all right, let me look at beyond. BYND, 138 needs to build. 138, it goes to like 137.69 and it sells off $4. Okay, so again, so again I'm, I'm completely getting no value. As you can see here, literally no value of the day. Um, I, caught a, you know, I caught a small short on Tesla. I actually shorted it uh, through the lows of the day off that 870 level, went to 866. Again, I knew it wasn't gonna be a big trade because the bottom support, uh, was 8.64, so I, I just made, I made nothing on it. I made very small on it, um, very very small on it. Uh, Amazon started doing okay, but again, that's the point. It was doing okay. Okay, it wasn't doing phenomenal. It was doing okay. When you think the Dow is going to be up a thousand points, you would think Amazon would be up like, like 50, 60 points. Not so much. So here's a pivot, pretty decent pivot. Uh, again, decent, decent pivot on Amazon. 2470, 2471 uh, needs to build. Here was Amazon. Again, I like Amazon this week, right? So here's the 2470. Uh, went to 2488. Again, you know, nice move. Again, if you caught the trade, great. But again, when you're thinking of Amazon, right? One of the greatest trading vehicles that the market has to offer only being up 22 points with the Dow up a thousand at one point. That's kind of my point. I mean, I like Amazon macro. I do. I'm, you know, waiting for that confirmation. Uh, but again, it just didn't give that juice. And again, that was kind of the theme for the whole group of that. So again, look, I go, I got 1% value today. Sit tight. There's literally, again, this is kind of where I was. Um, and I said, listen, maybe if it gets down to over, under a hundred, it gets more aggressive. Never got that was the low of the day, 100 on Roku. Uh, but again, if you took the trade, good job. Uh, Netflix again. Forget about this 1150. This was 1150. I was putting pre-market. It went down to 404. So forget about that trade. Uh, here is the pivot on Tesla towards the end of the day. Uh, 881, 882 needs to build. It went to 86. It closed well. I, I again, I really like Tesla, but I don't like it until it really confirms macro. So. I think this whole area here will be sneaky, and we'll talk about the areas, uh, the sneaky areas on Monday in the morning strategy. But I, I, again, this is the highest close in this whole formation uh, since that big continuation day. Um, I think if it starts taking out the sneaky pivot right here, it starts taking out two days worth of selling, uh, it will test macro. And any close, guys, oh, any close above this channel could get to 950 again. We don't anticipate. This is the number. This is what it has to do. Again, we don't anticipate it happen. It actually has to happen. Uh, so I still like, obviously, that. Um, and again, I kept that saying. I say, look, don't get caught up on the scoreboard. Nothing is moving in beta except for Apple and Boeing. This is the discipline. This is how you get rid of FOMO. Again, this is the message. Sometimes the message is much more important in your actions. Okay, it's like it's like I say this all the time in the live webinar. Uh, there's, there's a terminology in baseball. It says do the little things that don't show up in the box score. And sometimes, again, less is more. It will give you more value. 
uh, will give you more value than actually uh, participating. Um, I caught some, yeah, again, perfect example. There's no juice in beta. 231 rejected twice. The thing only went up 30 cents. That's it. 30 cents on a, on a, on a day that the market went up 1,000 points. So again, really, really uh, disappointing action in beta. Uh, and again, this is why I pretty much got shut out. Uh, here is really a good flush. I know a lot of you guys did very, very well. I completely panicked out of my cover. So this is the you know this is the first this is the first area um, again I only took uh, I took Tesla to the short side and then I took this Boeing short to the short side experienced traders only uh, two fourteen twenty two fourteen if it builds below can flush and I said max paying a dollar experienced traders only and if you look at Boeing and usually I don't look at the five minute view but again you had to because it was such a big macro it, it had a, such a big macro point. The, the, I, and I tweeted this out. Usually when we look for dips, okay, uh, on 60 minutes that the buy and remounts, they, usually the dips are a dollar, dollar and a half off the highs. Boeing at one point, just to give you an example how crazy strong the stock was, again, 41% move on the week. Boeing's 60 minute rising support was $12, $12 where it was trading. You, you don't see that every day. So here's the 114 area. Uh, here's the 114 area we were talking about. Uh, hold on, let me just look at the five minute view. Um, I just want to make sure I want to give you the right pr right area. It was the two four, yeah, it was here. It, is, it was the 214 area. Uh, 214, 214, 214. And I'm sorry, it's right here. Sorry, right there. It's right here. So the stock flushes, right? The stock flushes. Um, I cover it, right? I cover it. And then I watch the stock go down like another seven points. I, you know what it is? It, it's sometimes when you get too fast of a move, okay? Um, and you know how strong the stock is, you're almost in a weird way, and this is why I said experienced traders only, you're almost in a weird way that you're shocked how fast this, you're, getting the, you know, you're getting the flow, that you almost panic cover. And I, I covered it, watched it go you know, back up, you know, right a little bit, and then really got killed. So again, that was on me, but again, mentally, I was already kind of checked out for the week. But again, it is what it is. Uh, again, let your worst trade in the world uh, be one that you're green on. Um, and amazing, it just kept on going. 211 it actually went down uh, to 205. So he did catch this trade. Uh, and, and again, this is this. I joked around on that, and I said, "Hey, tell me your life didn't flash in front of your eyes on that pivot." I go, "I almost died. How aggressive it was." Uh, so that was that. Uh, again, it is what it is. It wasn't my one of my finest moments. Uh, but again, green trade is a green trade. And anyway, you look at it, uh, and I got look slowly but surely the value is starting to come in. Very, very slowly, but again, at the end of the day, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's all about, again, making it to the next day. So uh, going into this week, again, can we see, you know, some pullback in the indexes Monday? Yeah, we could. Uh, I'm starting to look at more names that are lagging, and I, I never thought I would say that after, uh, for example, after uh, a thousand point move. In beta, but again, I, I think this week you got to concentrate on names like Amazon. A lot of call buying coming in. You know, I want to see it start coming out of this channel here. Uh, I really like this NOW if it starts confirming. Uh, NOW has been in a good channel here uh, for you know pretty long time. Obviously, uh, Tesla will be watching as well. Uh, I like this JB Hunt in the trucking space. Again, big big run up and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days. So basically almost two weeks of consolidation. Looks like it wants to break out as well. The key is right now to look at names that didn't go out on that run. So if you're looking at Boeing, you say to yourself, watch Boeing for more upside this week. Had a 41% move. So at Boeing, I am not watching to the upside this week. I am going to be watching to the downside this week. So if it gaps up and hits supply and starts putting in lower highs, I mean, again, after a 41% move uh, on the week, you know, you could get a, you know, you could get a 10% pullback. Why not? Again, nobody's saying it can't go to 300. Why not? But again, from the trading aspect, day to day, we're only talking about trying to get value for that day. Um, coming back reassessing and trying to value for the next day. So guys, have a great, great weekend. Uh, I wish everybody the best. Live your life, be a good person, learn how to smile, and God willing, I'll see you all on Monday. Take care, guys. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.